We've run it on the dyno. We weigh it on the scales. We run it up the doggy ramp. And we take it on the trails. So sit back and enjoy the H10 Optic. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got the X10 Optic High Performance Trail Buggy by Vanquish Products. Uh, I don't know if I can understand the H10, but the Optic, I can't understand it. So I looked it up on my phone here in the slang dictionary. The way a situation, action, event, etc. is perceived by the public or by a particular group of people. So what I'm thinking is like a, what a lot of people are thinking. This is basically like maybe the beta of the Ripper 2. They're going to put this out there and whatever people suggest they do to it to improve it, they're going to do. But I've got it set even beside the capper. My capper, the wheelbase is a bit extended on it. So it's, it's pretty close, but... Uh, I wasn't going to buy this truck, but when they told me the wheelbase 13 and a half inches, which that's truly what it is, 13 and a half inches, I just measured it. And here it is sitting beside the bomber. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that so you can look. Okay, what we're going to do with this truck, first we're going to weigh it. Get the weight. I got this new set of, well, it's my old set of scales. But basically, I put it on a Black & Decker Workmate. And it's on slides, uh, CNC linear rails. And the back ones are fixed. That way, you know, it's not as hard. Plus, it's, it's adjustable. So if you got one axle that's wider than, say, your rear axle, you can just take these knobs and, you know, adapt it to whatever size truck you need. But we're going to go ahead and put it on there and get the weight. Then once we get the weight, we're going to put it on the, uh, a lot of people's calling this a dyno. Basically, the only thing this thing does is tell you overdrive. Uh, we got two, two digital readouts. The one on the bottom is the rear axle. The one on the top is the front axle. It will also tell you your drive shaft angles with weight setting on the tires, which is what you really need if you're having a problem, a lot of binding and stuff. It's already solved a lot of problems for a couple of drivers anyway. But... Uh, Let's get this thing on these scales, see what it weighs out at, then we're going to see the real overdrive. Now we're going to take the truck, put it on the scales. we got the scale zeroed out. Let's see here. Okay, the scales are zeroed out. And it's 54, 64 from the front to the rear. And the side is, from side to side, it's 50-50, but it, it doesn't have a battery in it. Let me get a battery put in it. We'll see what it looks like with a battery in it. Okay, we just put a 1500 milliamp 3S battery in it. And there's an XT90S what I run on all my trucks. I gotta cut this off and solder another one on there, but we'll go ahead and get the weight. And I don't think I can do this one-handed, but we will try. Okay, we got a battery in it now, 1500 milliamp 3S. It might make a little bit of difference. Let me make sure I got this sitting on here pretty, pretty close. And it did change it a little bit. 53 to 47, 53 on one side, 47. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. And the overall weight of the truck is 2,585 grams. 2585. Now we're going to take it over to the dyno, get it crunk up, and get the overdrive. All right, we got it on the dyno, we got it strapped down. We're just going to try to tell the overdrive percentage. Basically, we just got two straps in the back. These are just uh, elastic shoestrings. One in the front. We got to clean this garage out just to kind of hold it down so it don't jump off the jump off the rails. And like I said before, this first number up here, it's gonna be your front axle. This is gonna be your back axle. So we'll try to get the back axle at 100 RPM doing this one-handed. And once we get it held steady around 100 RPMs, whatever we got left over at the top, 
it takes a little bit to read. Maybe I can run it up on the trim. I don't know if the trim will let it run that high. We're looking at about 6% right there. Let's just see if we can get it on up there just a little bit more. 104. So let's see, let me see. I'm trying to do this with my right hand. Okay, 103. About six to seven percent overdrive is what I'm gonna say. Yeah, there you go. Roughly seven, round seven. I don't know what they advertise it as, but as you can tell, it's, it's tracking on the dyno pretty good to be a RTR. Usually, a RTR the phones are a lot more off the net, and I'm not I'm not a fanboy. I really like Vanquish trucks because of the quality. We're just going to take it on up a little bit. Let's just see what it'll do. Open it up a little bit since we got her strapped down and on here. All she can do is get right into the side of my wife's Mercedes, which wouldn't be too cool. Let's look at her run. Got a little more left in her. Oh, she wanted to jump off there. And I can tell you what caused that. Let me let that roller stop turning before I set this truck back down on it. So I don't flat spot the tires. What caused that is the way I've got it strapped down here through the through this one eye hole. But I bet if I go through that eye hole and around through there and through there and then back down, it'd be a whole lot better. So we'll be right back. Get it strapped down a little bit better. Don't do your truck like this. Don't be like Big Head. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all because, uh, you know, the way y'all look at people's garage and stuff, you think stuff. That right there is fingernail polish remover, 100% acetone. I went to Beat the Creek. That's for all the mud. That's, that's Kentucky mud, buddy. Kentucky mud sticks to you. And I bought a bunch of Canyon Trails. I love Canyon Trails to cut them, put them on trail trucks. And here's a bunch of them. And I got some more on a rope over there. But that's what that is. Don't think it's anything crazy. It's just acetone. But let's go ahead and uh, I don't know why I shared that with y'all. Let's see if we can rev this thing back up. See if we can get her up a little higher. I'm trying to dodge my... She's holding in there pretty good. get back around here. I forgot I left my AC on, so I hope it ain't too loud for y'all. But we're going to take this out on the trails tomorrow. That's wide open. That's about normal for a brush motor. 632. I wouldn't say that's accurate on the overdrive. But we're running it pretty hard. Let me see if I can hold this with this. Let's just go ahead and get stupid and put the light on it. And the ESC. The ESC is holding in there like a boss. I want to make sure on this dyno to let off real slow because if you let off too fast, those rollers have a little bit of weight to them and it will spin on your tires. But this looks like a solid, solid little trail buggy. Uh, I have it out on the trails in the morning, which the morning will be like in two or three seconds for y'all, maybe. Maybe I should check the heat on this motor. Let me see if I can get... Where is the motor? I seen it earlier. It's way up in the front. Let me see if I can get it off here and check the heat on this motor, or at least flip it over right quick. And see if we can get a reading off of it. 
There it is, right there it is. We just flip it on its over on its side. You know that won't be the first time it'll be flipped over on its side. And even a cheap RTR, cheap, I wouldn't say cheap, but the RTR electronics hold up pretty good. 80 degrees, I mean, it's not far off what the room temperature is in here. Ooh, I don't like that. Now that's one thing we gotta worry about right there. We gotta do something about that servo wire. We'll probably just tie wrap it to that top link. See how, see how that servo wire was hanging down? It's loose like that, yeah, yeah. So what we will do, we'll probably just tie wrap it to the top link. Kind of like we got on the, where is the truck at? Kind of like we got on the Pro. See how the Pro servo wire is a uh, tie wrap to the top link? So that's probably what we'll do. That's what happens when you have it behind the servo or axle on servo. But this is this what makes this truck a little different. I've never saw one with the horn pointing down. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, with everything being up front, we won't get caught up on nothing. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna be at the river in one. Oh, I should count it backwards like they do on real YouTube. We'll be at the river at, on one, three, two, one. Uh, we're not at the river yet. We forgot. We're going to put it on the doggy ramp and see what kind of degree it'll do as far as climbing. So we're going to set the doggy ramp up. We're going to have to back it up a little bit. That's a pretty good bit. We're going to see what that is here in just a second. Okay, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but we got the level. Got the doggy ramp out, and it's saying about 84 to 85 degrees. So now we're just going to see if this trail buggy, high performance trail buggy by Vanquish can climb up it. And you can see it has no problem at all. And yes, this is a doggy ramp. The dog's dead, but I still remember him by this ramp. I'm just joking. I never had a dog. I bought this from some old dude off Marketplace. I don't even know if he had a dog. Let's see what that is. Let's see, let's break the... Yes, yeah, 87. 87, 88. Let's see if it do 87 or 88. And I can tell you, this this body pops, man. It's kind of like a kind of like a flat black. Check it out. I'm impressed. That's that's what that 13.5 wheelbase is doing for that truck. So let's go up a little bit more with it. I hope to soon get one of those gauges from Lowe's for Home Depot. Well, I won't have to use my phone because we're going to be taking all the stuff you see in this video. We've already took some of it to a couple comps and let some of the local team drivers and just local into in any driver you know check out their trucks on it i know that's steeper than that because saying 88 89 90 okay that's saying 90 but i don't believe that's might be right on this phone but we'll see i doubt it to pull this off this is pretty pretty much straight Pretty straight. I said if we can hit it square, we want to try to hit it pretty square. Kind of feels like I'm see it's lifting that left front tire. Well you can't see it, but I can see it. Just a little bit. Ooh! Got our first scratch on it. Got oh I ain't took the plastic off, so that probably didn't even count. Let's just go up a little bit more. And we are filming with a GoPro, so. You know, it's got that bubble lens, so it can actually, you know, not show how steep this actually is. That's too steep. 
I don't believe it's going to climb that. Pretty close. We could probably back it up just a hair. And it might climb it. But I was surprised at how steep it climbed already. With no weight. Man, you put you a little bit of weight on that front axle. I think you, you do pretty good. I did go ahead and change the plug out on the truck from my XT60 to XT90. That's just what I run in my trucks. Oh, I believe we could probably make that. And I put some hook and loop on the inside of that battery tray because that's what I use on my batteries. That'd probably be a good idea. Hook and loop is just a glorified name for uh, Velcro. Ooh, check it out. Oh, just move the whole doggy ramp. And you can tell this doggy ramp has got a lot of traction on the on it because it's got that uh, carpet. Here's the little lines. It's like ribbed. Yeah, you put your brushless motor in here, like a Fusion, something that you can really control. This thing would be money. Well, that's it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, we're going to the river in three, two. We made it to the river, and we've got the H10 Optic by Vanquish Products. We're gonna run it on these rocks down here. So you'll see one side of the clip from right here to the outro. So you can see in real time what this truck could do. No problem. Took heartbreak hill with no problem. Let's see right here. I know we're going to have to back up right there. We went way too far. I think this truck is going to flip. Yes, yeah, way. I wasn't paying attention and got it way too far. Well, it still made it. Let me get my camera up a little bit. Let's drop way down in here. Man, it just... Oh, tumble wumble. That's asking a pretty good bit out of that uh, long wheelbase. Let's see if we can get back up there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Mr. H10. What an odd name for a uh, truck, right? Let's take it down here and see if it'll go up. Should handle this with no problem because that wheelbase will help it right here. It rolls over gracefully. There we go. Now we gotta get that tire right up there and sticking and it's kind of acting. Oh, yes sir. Go, baby, go. You can see how sticky them tires are. Look how they pick it up all that dirt. These are some super, super duper sticky tires. Let's see if we can bounce it up this right here since we're already over here. This is a, can be kind of difficult at times. You already see the front wanting to lift. I think just a little bit of weight on the front of this truck. And it would be like, whoo. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty cool. Might go as a teaser at the front of the video. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's. I, would, I wasn't really expecting it to get this. We might could get it if we go over this way just a little bit. But you have to have a whole lot of weight up on your tires. 
right there to get that. So we're not gonna get that. That's, that'll be all right. It'll be back down here with some brass on that front axle for too long. I'm sure, it's already on its way to America. Let's see if it'll pull this out. I have no idea. I think the long wheelbase will help it right here. But uh, like I showed you last night on the scales, it's not close to 60-40 yet. But uh, that long... Oh, come on, truck. And this is not a comp truck, and I realize that it's a trail buggy. It's major trails, fun. It's, it's kind of like the Axial Capra. But, you know, if I take it down here on these rocks that I normally do, you as a buyer can uh, make up your mind if it would be the right trail truck for you. Ugh, can't stay on it. Can't stay on it. I should have adjusted this uh, remote a little bit better last night before I left. Before I put it up. Oh, it's totally upside down. Yeah, we scratch our trucks up. I'm sorry if that hurt y'all's feelings. Ooh. I give it one more try. Work with me, Mr. H10, work with me. Oh. I said one more, but I'm gonna do one more. I got a feeling it can make this. I don't know why, I just feel like the uh, 13.5 wheelbase, and I did measure it last night. I don't know if I said that in the video or not, but I did measure, and it was a 13.5. I don't think we're gonna be able to get that. I don't think that's gonna work. No, that ain't. So we didn't get that hill. So let's just be completely honest. It didn't get that hill. Let's go down here and try some of these. Yeah, it's hitting on the skid right there. Oh, it's not going to stay in there like that. Oh, we almost had that. He was there, bro.
Come on. It's hitting on the back of that skid. Oh. Yeah. That long wheelbase is... I think, I think maybe it should be lifted. One of my buddies has got one on the way too, and uh, he's talking about lifting it just a little bit because of the, the skid on it. But, you know, it's a trail buggy. It's not a comp truck, so. I did put a flat skid on my capper and it did help it a lot. And putting a flat skid also extended the wheelbase. I think it was a spare times hobby build. Uh, flat skid with the, uh, of course, the Traxxas rod ends on the factory links. It's, it's almost getting there. It's just hitting right on the very back of the skid. Try it one more time, then we'll go to something else. And I don't know a way to get it off there. See, right there's where we usually start to climb. Maybe if we could stay in the groove a little bit longer. No, ain't no way. So it didn't get it. Let's keep doing what we do down here. Yes, sir. Oh, that was pretty cool that it made it up that because usually uh, trucks get stuck on that right there. Go ahead and see if we can make it up up and around this little rock right here. Oh. Come on over. Nice little truck. Move my camera up a little bit. There we go. Sit down in there. There you go. Now turn back. And right there, she, she was bottoming out on the axle. We're asking a lot of a long wheelbase trail buggy here. Hey! She done it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Run right through the fire pile, too. I think about anything would get hung up right there. There's that back tire rolling like I've seen in all the other YouTube videos. Oh, yeah, I believe my buddy's right. That skid, if you can, let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, that little indention right here that pops out. If you could get all that flat, that would give you a little bit more ground clearance. And that's what he's talking about. So yeah, it's not a bad idea. Let's try this again, see what we can do. So far that, uh, Servo in the front, it, it's not getting hung up on nothing. I know that was a concern of mine. And as uh, far as changing out the batteries, I know there's a couple videos I saw and I would just thought to myself, how many times did it take them to practice putting that, changing that battery out? 
you know, on them little battery doors before they got it where it looked like it wasn't that hard. And be honest with you, it's not, it's not hard at all. It's not as hard as it you'd think it is. It's actually pretty, pretty seamless and an easy, easy thing to do. Let's, uh, Take it down here and see if you can climb this little little part. I might have to grab my bag up. Even though I'm down here by myself, I don't want my bag to go missing. So let me grab it right quick. And I'm gonna head down here to this other little little spot we've been climbing on lately. And uh see if it'll go up it. I don't know if it will or if it won't, but it's on a different tier. Y'all probably see me climb it. I think the red cat climbed it last in a short. And uh, let's see if it'll climb it right up here. It is. I'll bag down. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think it's going to climb this. This is a lot steeper than I remember. Not for it being a trail buggy, uh, yeah, it's not going to climb that. We could get a little bit of brass on that axle. About, I think it was, what, 56, 46, is that right? 54, 46 or something like that. I think we would be money with that wheelbase. Because this wheelbase is basically, <laughs> basically the same wheelbase I got my cap at right now that I extended it out to. Look at this. People are so disrespectful these days. I actually got this truck yesterday at about 11 o'clock and I was washing my car and got it from the uh, Fed FedEx. I believe it's FedEx to deliver. Awesome. That's good right there. And uh, my wife asked me if I wanted to go out and eat. I really wanted to film this video, but you know, with our hobbies, you got to keep your priorities in order. This is just a piece of plastic and a little electronics, you know, never, uh, you know, replace time that you can spend with your family with an RC car, never. Because you can get feedback from that family. You know, they love and care for you just as much as you love and care for them. And they won't be, be there all the time. And these little plastic cars, they'll be coming out until we're all dead and gone. Somebody will be making them. But yeah, I try never to put my hobbies before family and most of all never put your hobby before god because if you put your hobby before god that is your god your hobby a lot of people don't realize that i know the reason i wake up every morning and it ain't out to come out here and play with a little rc car on a bunch of rocks at an old cotton mill. Yeah, get up there, baby. So I try to keep my priorities in order. Oh, it's wanting to. I know it can do that. Ah, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, that's what this truck was meant to do right here. Oh, got her upside down right there. 
Still got the plastic on the roof. I noticed it hits on the roof and the right at the front of the hood. So if you wanted to put a little plastic on there, if you, you don't like scratching your RC cars, that would probably work out good. I'll put you a little piece of probably some clear plastic because that's where the Vanquish products. It hits right below that front part, right, right there. So you might want to put a little something on there if you don't like scratching your RCs up. I love scratching mine up. Oh, but there's some poison oak in that, so I ain't gonna get up there. That's something yeah, I learned a long time ago. I learned it too. I didn't learn it. I learned it. Is uh, be careful where you run your truck because you run it through poison oak and it rubs the bottom of that axle and then you pick that thing up. Oh, look at that. Now you got poison oak. And I have gotten poison oak off a truck that's been sitting on the shelf for a couple of days. Well, my llama. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. This is it for me. The Vanquish Products H10 Optic. This is their vision for the future. The trail trucks. It's probably going to be... The Ripper 2 is probably going to look pretty close to this, but it's gonna, probably going to be all machined out aluminum. It's probably going to be pre-orders only. That's just what I think. I don't know no more than you do. But uh, just remember till next time, I love you, but God loves you more.